back. I hope you enjoyed the last couple videos that were all about the Yoshimura exhaust. I'm truly enjoying it, loving it. I love having sound on the bike now. It's friggin' awesome. To keep the video from being crazy long, I'm gonna go ahead and do the DB next week and try and replicate some of the sounds that I got from the previous videos so that we could get a fair assessment of both sounds that we're gonna get, whether or not we wanna use the DB or whether we don't. I will say I'm kind of enjoying the fact that the DB's not in there right now. It, up front, the sound was really, really loud for me, but I think as time goes by, I've kind of gotten more and more used to it and I'm actually liking it a lot now. I don't know if I wanna keep it in there or not, but we'll wait till next week to figure that out. Okay, so for the first thing we're gonna deal with is gonna be these tank grips here. I don't know if you guys have had tank grips before, but in my opinion, they're an absolute must. Now these ones are more specifically from tank grip, but you don't need to use tank grip. You can actually buy them from Cycle Gear or wherever you wanna get them from. You can get tons of different versions, whether you wanna cut them up yourself and apply them to the bike, however you want. I know they're just stickers. It's not that big of a deal. But what I'd like to talk about is why they're important. I've been really riding super sports as the majority of the motorcycles that I ride, many other motorcycles, but ultimately on these, to me, it is considerably more important that you're using more lower body to hold yourself up on the motorcycle as well as provide grip for your inner thighs so that you don't go sliding around on the bike because you're constantly moving on a motorcycle like this if you're on back roads and you're really kind of playing around having a good time you're going to be moving around a lot on the bike as well as using your legs to hold yourself on the bike while you're leaning over on the side so you're really going to want to not slide around on the bike now in some cases you can put them down here as well and i might end up doing that too but really while you're riding around and you're trying to get a little more aggressive with it these are going to provide considerably more confidence while you're riding so let's get these things put on real quick. So what we get out of this specific kit is the two side pieces, two center pieces, and obviously a bunch of stickers there. We also get a nice wipe to wipe down the paint so that we get a little better grip. First thing to do is remove my good old faux carbon fiber, and we'll do a little goo gone to see if we can get rid of some of this stuff. Can't go wrong with a little Windex. But Windex or rubbing alcohol is good to kind of remove any wax or anything that you have previously on the bike. And these stickers stick really good, but if they're not done right, they will not stick. So I'm thinking we could start with the easy ones first. So that's how it's gonna sit on there, at least these main pieces. So if you have a hair dryer, I suggest using that, not a heat gun, but just what I got. So this is what I'm gonna do. So we'll get the first piece on here. And really we're just trying to get everything nice and pliable, as well as the surface being at least at 80 degrees is what it's asking for. You're all nice and pliable, surface area nice and warm. Going for the center first and work our way out. There we go. So now for the hard part. And the reason why it's hard is because it's so, it curves up and around and over and down and there's so much going on within this fairing. So I think this would have to be like really pliable to go there and stay and not pop up in the middle like that. So we'll start here, we'll work our way through the middle while it's still warm and we might have to like keep applying heat to it. All right, so let's give her hell. No, oh, that heat gun is hot. That's gonna be our first piece. And remember, we're gonna attack the center as much as possible here. There we go. Oh yeah, she's starting to get warm. Oh, is she too warm? Oh, too hot. That's why you gotta be careful with the gun, guys. This isn't the best method, but I would say that actually came out really well and it feels like it's hitting on all spots. Why is the fact of burning my finger, Jesus. Worth the sacrifice. My favorite upgrade on a motorcycle. Maybe the Oceanmere exhaust, but still. This is definitely, this is like, how do you not have this on a bike? This should come stock. Okay, let's get the other side done. From there, I can figure the rest. As we heat her up, maybe this time we don't heat it up as much. It's looking good. So really, I mean, as long as you're careful with the heat gun, it's not a bad way to do it. It's probably a pretty good way to do it. It would just take a little bit longer with the hair dryer, but keep in mind, the hair dryer is probably not gonna damage anything. Or if you mess up with this heat gun, you're gonna melt in bubble paint, or you're gonna hurt yourself because it's gonna melt this freaking grip too. So here are all the components you get with the frame slider kit. Like I said, it is for an MT-07. Okay guys, for the last item to install today is gonna to be some kind of frame slider, which will go right in this little open gap right here, which is obviously kind of fugly. So what was really neat is the other day, a subscriber, Dr. Demon, had hit me up asking me how wide this area was. He put a little cap on here so that it would make this look a little bit better than just having this big massive gap, which would be pretty cool. So I think that's kind of neat. I'll link one of those down below so that you guys could check it out too. Thanks, Dr. Demon, that was pretty cool. So what's kind of interesting about frame sliders is I would say they're kind of controversial. Whether or not you should use them 
or not, I think is the question. I think if you're a newer rider and it's more likely that you think you're gonna drop your bike in a parking lot or at very, very slow speeds, I think a frame slider is a very good thing for you to have. If not, I don't know if a frame slider is the best thing you could do. And the reason for that is there's a couple of things that could happen with a frame slider. One, they stick out obviously a little bit farther past so that when your bike hits the ground, it will hit this frame slider obviously instead of your pretty fairings or anything else on the bike. But the negative things that could happen with that is it's directly attached to your frame. So at a high speed, hitting just the frame slider and nothing else on your motorcycle could potentially damage the frame of the bike. And if you damage the frame of the bike, the bike is no good anymore. Now that's just a possibility, not factual information. But for the most part, I would say a frame slider at high speeds is going to ruin your bike and or potentially grab chunks on the asphalt as it's sliding, forcing your bike to potentially flip. Or without a frame slider, you're basically gonna obviously ruin all of the prettiness of this bike and you're gonna have to buy all these new fairings, which in my opinion is a little bit cheaper. So I think the frame slider thing's gotta be something you need to come up with whether or not you wanna buy it or not with those two options there. What kind of rider are you? Are you new? Are you potentially gonna drop it on the ground? I'll tell you, at least with my CBR 600 RR, I dropped the thing twice in the garage trying to put it on a lift for the first time ever. And then I also dropped it in a parking lot once. And then of course I uh, did this to it, which frame sliders wouldn't matter at that point. I damaged the entire bike, so it was end over end, 80 miles an hour, just destroyed the damn thing. I'm gonna go ahead and install them as I've never installed them on any bike before. And all this is just research and potential freaking maybe. So I leave that up to you to make that decision yourself. I'll link a couple frame sliders down below. I got these from TST Industries. They are the Womet Tech version for an MT-07, but they fit perfectly fine on this bike. So we're gonna go ahead and install them today. I'll go through the process of showing you how to do it. They're like, the thing that can be sketchy about installing a frame slider is potentially you're taking this massive 17 millimeter bolt out. And what could happen at that point is your engine inside of the frame could slightly shift. What is bad about that is if it does shift a little bit and you try and put the bolt in there and then you try and use tools to wrench it in, you'll potentially strip off the bolt or the engine case, which is obviously not cool. So we need to be careful with it. We do need to Loctite it. We do need to torque it. We're gonna do all those things in the video today. So the tool I'm gonna use for this is 3 8 ratchet, an extension, and a 17 millimeter socket. Definitely in there pretty good. So like I said, what I am kind of nervous about is whether or not the frame will dip just slightly. And I would say the way that came out, that is not gonna be the case. And I don't know if you can tell on the video there, but I would say that that came out like perfectly clean. The engine did not shift in any way, shape or form. So that is friggin' fantastic. So just to be sure, what I'm gonna do is always by hand and see if I can get this thing to thread in and I can pretty damn easily. All right, so the layout or the order in which all this goes on is you have you have the main bolt, you have this which will replace the washer, the frame slider itself, and then this little aluminum piece that'll go on top. Never go wrong with some blue 242. And we're just gonna put a little dab across the threads here. Let it run around the threads a little bit. So there we go. We got some Loctite on here. And once again, we're gonna do it all by hand till we get it nice and snug. And you can tell if you're getting, if you're getting more than like four or five threads, you know you're good. You're not stripping anything out. So there we go. Takes 50. 55 newton meters, so we're not gonna do much here. We're just gonna get it nice and tight. There's a lot, okay, there we go. So it's starting to firm up a little bit. We'll grab a torque wrench and we'll go to newton meters. There are 55, there we go. 55 newton meters. And then for the last step, it comes with a little thing there to kind of pretty it up a little bit. There's our first frame slider installed. So let's go ahead and get to the other side. So we'll repeat the same steps on this side. Came out nicely. We'll verify one more time that our bolt by hand will easily go in. If we get three or four, five threads like this and it's easy, then we know damn well that it is not gonna strip and we're gonna be good to go. So once again, bolt, this little piece here, actual plastic frame slider and metal chunk of frame slider. Run some Loctite on here. Make sure we're getting our threads by hand with ease. Now we can get our ratchet on here and run her down the rest of the way. All right, she's firming up on me. Still at 55 Newton meters. There we go. Last piece. So it was a short video for you guys this week. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. Instead of just kind of putting things in, you actually kind of do it right so you don't strip stuff out and mess stuff up. So I'm happy to have the frame sliders on here. This is the first time, like I said, I've ever had frame sliders on a bike. It sure does kind of clean it up a little bit down here. I think it'd be kind of cool to go with the other things as well. If frame sliders is not what you're interested in, like a little cap to cover that little hole would be nice because it does kind of look a little awkward to just have this massive hole and a big ass uh, 17 millimeter bolt staring at you. So good to have these on. These are, like I said, these are pretty much 
much my favorite upgrade. Every single motorcycle I've ever owned, I put tank grips on. I've had them kind of come off before, which is why I thought it would be more important to show you how to do it. Clean up the area, heat it up right and how to actually kind of mold it on there so that it stays on there and doesn't come off. My Ninja 400 was starting to fail in the middle here, but I definitely did not do the job that we did for this. So to me, this is super important and super cool. Thanks again for watching guys, and we'll see you guys next week.